Hello everyone, how are you? And today we're going to be talking about SI units and orders of magnitude. And these are important because scientists need to be sure when they talk about things in science that they are all using the same units. They need to be sure that when I say I have 10 kilograms of something that I mean the same as when you say you have 10 kilograms of something. So let's start by looking at an ancient unit, the cubit. What is a cubit? Well, the cubit is from ancient Egypt. We're talking about 5,000 years ago now, one of the first human civilizations. People used a unit of measurement called the cubit. And one cubit was the distance from the elbow to the tip of the fingers. So here you are, here is one cubit. So, it's fairly easy. You always have the cubit with you. And they also had other units of measurement based on the finger and also on the width of the hand. And these are the first units of measurement used by humans. So a question. Why is it do you think people don't use the cubit today? Hmm. Well, if you think about that, the answer should be fairly obvious, and that's because cubits are not all the same. Some people have different length forearms. And just note there, the Egyptians did have a special cubit called the royal cubit, and that was the first standardized unit of measurement. They tried to make all royal cubits the same, and this was standardizing the unit. But not everyone had a royal cubit rod, so some people were still using their arms. And of course, arms are not the same. So the cubit did not last, and now we do not use it. But what do we use? Well, scientists need precise answers, so they made better units. And the modern system of units in science is the SI system. So what is the SI system? Well, SI units are a system of units in science that are used almost everywhere. There are some parts of the world that don't use it. In America, they don't use all the SI units because they are metric units. So the SI system is based on the metric system, which uses the number 10 as its base. The letters SI, by the way, stand for Système International de Units. If I pronounce that in any way like a French person, probably not. And this is the international system. In English, we would put them the other way around. The international system for units. So that's where SI comes from. So there are seven SI units. And here they are. The basic units in the SI system are these. The meter for distance, you probably know. The kilogram for mass. The second for time the ampere for electrical current, Kelvin for thermodynamic temperature, the candela for luminous intensity, and the mole for the amount of a substance. And the symbols there are on the right. Just note that only the ampere and the Kelvin are capital letters. All of the others are small letters, and that is important. You... So those are the seven basic units. We will not look at all of them this year, but uh, there they all are anyway. And how do we use them? Well, there are many other units, but they can all be made up from these seven basic units. So, for example, we have the Newton. The Newton is the unit of force, but one newton can be broken down into one kilogram meter per second squared. And so those three SI units go together to make the newton. 
So whatever unit you are using, you can make it bigger or smaller by using orders of magnitude. So what are orders of magnitude? Scientists often need to use very, very large and very, very small numbers. And we need an easy way to talk about these numbers. So we come up with orders of magnitude. So let me ask you a question. What do we call one hundredth of a meter? One hundredth of a meter. It begins with a C and it is a centimeter. A centimeter is one hundredth of a meter. What about a thousandth of a meter? What do we call a thousandth of a meter? A thousandth of a meter is a millimeter. And these words, centi and milli, are prefixes. Prefixes. And a prefix is any piece of a word that we put at the beginning of another word to change its meaning. So you can have other prefixes as well. They are not just orders of magnitude. And you can also have suffixes which go at the end of a word. So here is a table of the most common orders of magnitude and the names that we give them. So let's start from the middle. Let's start from zero orders from one. We have one. So one meter is one meter. And let's go up one order of magnitude from one. We have deca. So ten meters is one deca meter. And that's got a symbol DA. Two orders of magnitude from one is hecto. So 100 meters is one hectometer. Three orders is kilo. So 1,000 meters is one kilometer. And then we skip to six orders of magnitude. One million meters is one megameter. And notice there that mega, the symbol, is a large M, not a small M. Very important to get that right. And then finally, nine orders of magnitude, a billion meters would be one gigameter, or sometimes gigameter, it's called. And the same if we go down. 0 0.1 meters is one decimeter. 0 0.01 meters is one centimeter. That's minus two orders. Minus three orders would be a millimeter, which we talked about before. And then minus six orders is a micrometer. And you can see that uses the symbol of a Greek letter mu, which is like a U, but with a little tail on the front as well as the end. And then finally, minus nine orders of magnitude is nano. So that would be one nanometer of length. You can also see that these four orders in the middle are not used very much. Hecto, deca, deci, and centi, we do not use them much because these are small numbers and people don't mind just saying 100 meters. They don't want to say one hectometer. Centi does get used sometimes, centimeters and centiliters are the only two I can think of, but mostly we stick to the orders of three and up. So, let's look at some examples here. 1,000 grams of weight would be what? 1,000 grams, that is going to be one kilogram. One kilogram weight. What about one billion bytes of information? One billion bytes of information. You've probably heard this word before. It is one g -g 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 gigabyte. One gigabyte of information. And let's try a small one. 0 0.000001 meters of distance would be what? M -m 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 micrometer, one micrometer of length. So that's minus six orders of magnitude from one, a micrometer. So try it on some of these. 
Here are some units. Now don't worry about what those units are. I've given you some information, but you don't need to know what they are. You just need to convert the orders of magnitude. So here's an example. 200 electron volts of atomic charge. So don't worry about what atomic charge is. You just need to know that 200 electron volts is going to be equal to 2 hecto electron volts. We're going up two orders of magnitude from one. So if we go up two orders of magnitude, the prefix is hecto, and the symbol is a small h. So we have 2 hev 2 hecto electron volts. And you can try it backwards. You can start with the symbols and work back to the original numbers. So 45 MeV is what? Well, what kind of M are we using? That's a big M. What order of magnitude uses a big M as its symbol? Well, that is mega plus six orders of magnitude. So with a big M, 45 MeV will be 45 mega electron volts or 45 million electron volts. Let's look at now the full list of orders of magnitude. And this is from Wikipedia and you can see that there are quite a few more but you probably don't need to know all of those. So we might need even bigger and smaller numbers in the future but for now these are what we've got. We go all the way down to Yocto which is a very, very small order of magnitude, minus 24 orders of magnitude from 1. And we go all the way up to Yotta, the other end, which is 24, plus 24 orders of magnitude from 1. But we do have another way to write out these very, very small and very, very large numbers. And we will look at that next time. So for now, we will leave it. Thank you for watching. I hope that was useful. And next time, it will involve a little bit more maths, but not too much. But anyway, bye-bye for now.